every year the story is the same there's a new snapdragon flagship 8 series chipset that's powerful it's good it's great but not as fast as the iphones you know what the new snapdragon 8 elite processor is here and things are changing in a big big way this is Rupesh, you're watching Silicon, subscribe if you haven't and I actually went hands on with the device part with the Snapdragon 8 Elite processor. I even got a glimpse of the upcoming ROG Phone 9 but just how good is this processor? How does it compete with the Dimensity 9400 or the Apple A18 Pro? What are all its new features? Well, I'm going to talk about all of that. Okay, so this is the new Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset. Yes, Qualcomm again changed the naming scheme. So will it be 8 Gen 2 Elite next year or 8 Elite Gen 2 or 8 Elite... Never mind. The point is this is going to power most Android flagships later this year and next year. And you know what? This completely changes things. Just check out the specs. This is based on the new 3 nanometer TSMC architecture, same as the Apple 18 Pro and Dimensity 9400. But here's the completely changing part. The semi-custom cryocortex cores are all gone. Instead, 8 Elite has the new Orion cores, the second gen version of the ones we saw in X Elite. And there's two prime cores now at over 4.3 gigahertz. Insane. Also gone are the efficiency cores, so you get 6 Orion performance cores at 3.5 GHz. So with all of that power, I know what you're thinking and we'll get to that. The Jeep has also got an upgrade with Adreno 830, which has a sliced architecture with 3 slices 1.1 GHz each. And this means it is 40% faster while bringing 40% better efficiency. I'm just looking at the comparison of 8 Elite versus 8 Gen 3 and yeah, everything has changed. Not a big fan of Qualcomm's changing names, but this deserves the Elite tag. It even has the upper hand versus the Dimensity 9400 in terms of CPU and in terms of GPU, the Dimensity flagship has the higher clock speed, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, now coming to the benchmarks. We got the benchmarks from Qualcomm Snapdragon reference device and you know what? 8 Elite hits 3 million in Android, which is absolutely crazy. The difference is also noticeable in Geekbench. Yep, the 8 Elite scores are insanely good as you can see. Great upgrade from the 8 Gen 3. In fact, even the brand new MediaTek Dimensity 9400 flagship chipset falls behind be it in single core or multi core. But coming to that big question, does it finally beat Apple? To answer that question, let me first show you a comparison between 8 Gen 3 versus A17 Pro last year's Apple chipset. And yeah, Apple is clearly better. But now look at the benchmarks of the 8 Elite versus the Apple A18 Pro. And yep, Snapdragon finally catches up to A18 Pro in single core. They're basically neck to neck. But the crazy part is it annihilates Apple in the multi-core test. Yep, finally. But as does the CPU, what about the GPU performance? I mean, these are the 3D Mark Wildlife Unlimited scores and the 8 Elite even beats the A18 Pro in the GPU department with an average of 159 FPS, while the A18 Pro scores 108 FPS in the same test. And more than anything, it's just great to see an Android flagship finally competing and in fact beating Apple in terms of raw performance. But with all that power, there is the doubt regarding thermals and battery life. Now, even with all the performance gains, Qualcomm is claiming better efficiency and Asus mentioned that the new ROG Phone 9 has 30% more battery life in popular games like Genshin Impact and Wuthering Waves. So honestly, I'm not very doubtful regarding the battery life, but as for the thermals and the heating, I think we'll get a better idea once we have a retail device with Snapdragon 8 Elite. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, there's more to the 8 Elite. 8 Elite has the largest shared cache size, which should result in smoother multitasking, faster data access, you know, overall improving performance. There's also support for faster LPDDR5X RAM, the Qualcomm Hexagon NPU is 45% faster and supports multimodal generative AI applications to work faster on device. It even works with the upgraded ISP to bring features like object eraser in videos. I'm not kidding. And this takes a bit of processing time, obviously, but the fact is this works on device. This is crazy. And I think this is one feature we'll see in the S25 phones. What do you think? Another cool feature was the ability to create a virtual light source for your videos using AI and again works on device. Now coming back to the ISP, now supports 320 megapixel photo capture if someone dares to make a 320 megapixel camera. It can also handle full HD 30 FPS videos from 348 megapixel sensors all at the same time. It has reduced shutter lag, limitless segmentation, better skin tones and sky adjustments. And this supports the latest Sony Litia sensors and the latest Samsung ISOCELL sensors which bring better perceived resolution, better autofocus, again, something we should see in the S25 phones. Apart from all that, one big update we got at the Snapdragon Summit is that Qualcomm will be supporting the 8 Elite with 8 years of Android OS updates and security patches. So if there's a brand that launches a phone with 8 Elite and says 3 years of OS upgrades, you know who the villain is. Look, all said and done, the new Snapdragon 8 Elite processor is powerful, it's 
packed and it's exciting. I mean, that in turn makes me excited for all the Android flagships that we'll be seeing later this year and next year. And the fact is a lot of them are coming. In fact, we got hands on a prototype unit, aka not final unit of the RG Phone 9. And I could see changes to the logo placement, the display on the back and with 8 Elite and the fact that ROG phones bring the best specs all around, it's going to be crazy and probably overkill. I mean, all in all, with the new Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, Android flagships will finally beat Apple in terms of raw performance while bringing in efficiency gains, and that is absolutely awesome. And in what I actually hope more apps and more games make use of all this performance. And as for thermals, like I said, we'll have to wait and see, which we should soon. So make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.